Welcome everyone, they call me Intro Tech Out, and does this scene in the background look familiar in any way? This is currently what a lot of outdoor scenes created by dreamers look like. And let's be honest, doesn't it feel kinda off? Now there's nothing wrong with the assets or the composition, and the animations seem to all be in order. The problem here is of course lighting. It just doesn't really feel like a daytime scene. There's a sun and a blue sky, yes, but the scene feels dark and well, kinda lifeless. Because this is something that is really common in dreams, I wanted to make a quick video on how to make a scene like this feel more vibrant and alive. Because the steps you have to run through aren't immediately obvious to the average observer. The method I'll explain in this video is applicable to pretty much any kind of sunny outdoor scene, whether in an urban or nature environment. Let's begin. First thing you want to do is to place a sun and sky gadget in your scene. Most of the significant edits will be made using this tool, but later I will also use a gradient effects tool to tweak the look of the scene even further. A really important setting in the Sun and Sky gadget that I unfortunately often see glossed over is the fog range, which can be found on the second page. In my last video I complained about this as well, but with the standard fog range, objects in the background often look transparent. If you have a night scene with a dark sky, this is not a problem, but for any scene that is brighter than complete darkness, it is. In any case, in the Sun and Sky gadget you can tweak the distance at which the fog appears, and I recommend setting it to the highest possible, 10,000 meters. Next, tweak the sun brightness and set it to 100%. This is something I always try to hammer home. Don't underestimate how bright the sun is. In real life, even with clouds, looking up at the sky can make your eyes water because of the sheer amount of light emitted by the star. Also, you might want to tweak the color of the sunlight and make it more white, which is the actual color of the sun. Last thing we need to do here is to make the skybox sun invisible, because Dream's idea of a sun is a couple bright flecks, which is not in line with the style we're going for here. With that page done, let's move on to the sky part of the sun and sky gadget. First thing we will do is changing the flag type of the sky. Like mentioned last video, I recommend flag type 4, 6 or 12 in pretty much that order. These flags are the least invasive and kind of look like vague cloud patterns. Now we get to sky brightness. It probably has something to do with the weird way this game engine works, but the brightness of the sky has a huge influence on the lighting in your scene. Usually when you can change the sun and sky brightness separately, you'd expect the lighting to be completely determined by the sun, with the sky acting as just a background of sorts. You wouldn't necessarily expect the sky to emit light of its own, but that's exactly what the sky in dreams does. Or maybe it's because objects are ever so slightly transparent to just the background. Anyway, we want the scene to feel bright, because it's in broad daylight. This means you can pretty much max out the sky brightness as well. But to get it to feel right, you'll probably need to go back and forth between a couple settings. First of all, the horizon definition. I myself always put this to zero, because the sky gets lighter towards the horizon, not darker. For the color of the sky, we will of course go for blue, but the exact amount that looks right, I can't really specify. I recommend to let the sky tint intensity stay at 50% and to just move the color picker around the palette until you find something you're satisfied with. Lowering the sky saturation can also help with finding the correct color. When you do, you'll probably notice that the scene looks much better now. But we're not done yet. Let's make an actual sun to put in the sky. For this you can just stamp a sphere, make it really big and set the brightness to 100%, while simultaneously deactivating the emit light setting so your scene doesn't actually get blasted with light from this object, which would make all the shadows disappear. You should put this fake sun as far away as possible from the scene, but obviously still in the visible range. It's also important to line it up with the location of the actual sun, so you might need to temporarily make it visible again, just to line it up. Deactivating the casting of shadows is also really smart at this point, or the fake sun will literally cast a shadow on your scene because it's in front of the real sun. This pretty much concludes the base. Now to go above and beyond with a great NFX tool. Just take it from the gadgets tab and place it in the scene. First setting you will come across is the brightness. Here it's possible to brighten the scene up even further, which you can really do to, to sell that hot summer feeling. After this you can slightly increase the contrast setting to give the scene more depth. The next setting, saturation, is a bit dangerous. High saturation often looks so pleasing to the eye that the immediate urge one has is to crank it up as high as possible. It takes some willpower to use it sparingly, but you honestly should. A scene shouldn't have to rely on saturation to be pretty. Now you can do whatever you want with the saturation, but I like to slightly desaturate really sunny scenes. I have no scientific reason for this, but it just feels more natural to me. On the next page of the gradient effects tool, you'll find a couple color pickers to change the color of certain things in the scene, like shadows or highlights. 
You can leave these settings alone if you want, but I tend to give both the shadows and the midtones a very slight blue tint. The reason for the shadows is that even though an object may be blocking the sun, the light of the sun still finds its way to the other side, via the sky. Ever notice, for example, that shadows appear blue on snow? But then when it's a cloudy day, the snow doesn't suddenly look all blue but complete white instead. It's because the shadow part of the snow is reflecting the blue light of the sky during clear days. If there's no blue sky, there's no blue shadow. This effect is barely noticeable on anything that doesn't have a very light color though, so you'll almost never notice it. That's why I also recommend doing this exclusively for more urban scenes, instead of nature ones. Urban environments often have light colored buildings or sidewalks, and that's really where this tint shines. You can also imagine that a forest blocks out both the sky and the sun, so if anything, shadows should have more of a green tint there. So for the shadows, the reason why I also tint my midtones blue is to replicate the blue tint you see after closing your eyes while looking at a bright light source for a while. This is something you can always reproduce, but I really associate the blue tint with the summer because that closing your eyes while looking at a bright light source is obviously way more common in the summer. But like I mentioned earlier, you can skip this whole step if you want to, this tinting business is all heavily based in preference. On the next page of the gradient effects tool, you'll find the effects. I first of all recommend turning up the lens flare to 100%, this is the final step in selling the brightness of the sun. Next you can maybe mess with the bloom setting a bit, though I'd keep it the way it is. On the end of the page there are a couple sliders. Here you can get rid of motion blur, which is always good, and you can sharpen or blur the screen. The sharpen effect is really subtle, but I like the look of it, so I just max it out. And with that, the lighting is completed. Now you see the incredible difference good lighting can make. Where the scene was boring and lifeless at first, now you can almost feel the heat of the sun and smell the nature through the screen. I'm looking forward to seeing what you guys can come up with using this lighting method. And with that concluding statement, I thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you around.